six months ago I set up my very first greenhouse and I've made a lot of learnings over those six months. A lot of plants have moved into the greenhouse and have been thriving. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to update you on the greenhouse, show you all of the plants inside it, do some well needed repotting in there and also tell you about anything that I learned about growing plants in a greenhouse. Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I can't believe it's already been six months but also only just been six months. I feel like I've spent a lot of time in this greenhouse. Uh, probably having to move it didn't help but I think this greenhouse came into my plant journey at the perfect time. I think really in 2023 I, I wouldn't say was getting bored of plants but you know it eventually becomes very repetitive and I feel like this whole growing plants indoors on moss poles like yeah that is my bread and butter I love doing that and over the years I really perfected my approach and I've proven to myself that yep I can do it so I think I was really needing a new challenge in this plant hobby to keep it interesting so that I can keep learning and keep making new experiences and this greenhouse offered all of that. By the way it's dripping down my back from the mister above. <laughs> I turned the misters and the fan everything off just so we don't have any noise kind of interfering with us and or getting wet uh, constantly. But I put in some uh, videos on the side when the misters are on and the afternoon sun hits it it looks like such a magical place in here honestly I couldn't be any happier today I really want to do some repotting there's a few plants in there that haven't been repotted in years or plants that I have newly acquired that I've never repotted there's still plants that have survived winter in there and the substrate kind of got a little bit yucky over winter so yeah I want to have a look at these plants. It was due to be done in like um, October, November, but um, then I got the news that I had to move house. So everything kind of went on the back burner. So here I am, middle of summer, wanting to repot my plants, which is probably not ideal, but better than not repotting them in the first place. I do repot throughout the whole year, but I think ideally spring when it's not too hot um, would be good. But I looked at the forecast over the next couple of weeks no crazy heat waves coming anyway so should be okay plus all of the plants in there are absolutely thriving I think they can handle a little bit of adversity talking about plants that are thriving in there let me give you a tour of the greenhouse first over here I've got a Ripsalis just really love the hanging plants they really add a nice feel to it over here I've got my Philodendron Ernestii and it is finally recovered but I'll show you a little more about it later. Over here we've got a variegated Monstera that's going to be a Christmas present for one of my friends. My Alocasia Gagaena, really beautiful but really needs a repot today. Uh, in the back we've got an Anthurium Magnificum grown from seed. It's nice ruffled edges. Nice. Probably one of my favorites over here is uh, my Forgetii, um, Magnificum ex Forgetii. Has some holes in here. I'm not too sure what happened, if that might have been an insect or not, but the other leaves are just absolutely perfect. Thurium Magnificum here. I oh, know, this is actually, sorry, Crystallinum. This is crazy rubbish. And uh, this is a Magnificum over here. Oh yeah, that's the newest crazy rubbish leaf. Very beautiful. Oh, I always forget this one's name, but I'll put it up on screen. It's a hybrid and it has some varicosum in it. But we need to repot this, so we're going to look at this a little bit closer. Some... Um, Alocasias over here, some of them got a little sun stressed, it's okay. Over here, this one looks a bit sad, but look, two big inflows. Um, what else do we have? Another Alocasia over here, Vergada, but a bunch of them have reverted to full green. Alocasia 
Jacqueline still only has one leaf to show at the moment but it already had an inflow coming out of this leaf, super weird. Alrighty, down here we've got a big pot of alocasia seeds. Gotta do something with them. Some Anthurium hybrids. These, I'm pretty sure, are um, is this plant self-pollinated. My Esmeraldens growing a new leaf. This one was the last one, so very nice. Uh, she's just recently moved in here. This is my um, Monstera Indonesian marble, settling in quite nicely over here. This is my Sharonii, and I only recently put it in the greenhouse as well, and this is the first leaf in the greenhouse. This was the previous leaf, so quite a significant increase in leaf size. This one is, what is it? Is it, I think it's supposed to be Pariso Verde, but reverted, so very disappointing. And over here we've got my carnivorous plant. So pretty, absolutely in love with her. And she finally started growing pitches now that she's in the greenhouse. So I think it's the mix of high light and high humidity that just makes her thrive. And she's growing wild, like she's taking over. Alrighty, over here we've got an Ale um, Monstera dubia. She's growing off the pole. She doesn't even have a pot to start off with, so roots coming out here as well. So maybe, maybe I need to do something with her, but she is thriving. So I'm figuring, let's not change what's not broken. This one is a medium, medium silver, silver. And the cool thing about this plant is that it just had really long runners and I just started cutting the runners in between a couple of nodes and they all started reshooting and now I have so many plants and shoots on this plant, super uh, on this pole, super pretty. Philodendron tenue over here, also the first leaf in the greenhouse and it is really happy, finally increasing a leaf size. This one is Philodendron splendid, recovered, it lived out here all winter long and it's finally recovered and giving me nice leaves, very pretty. Um, this one is emerald green and it also survived winter out here, needs a repot but it's looking pretty. Uh, variegated Syngonium and Berlamark's Fantasy over here. Also got to do something with that. Um, this is a no ID. Uh, Magic Dragon over here. A Gigas. And this one's called Vernery Iron. Hasn't done all too much, but we'll see. Now Brandianum also miraculously survived winter out here and is now finally giving me some decent sized leaves. The Jose Bruno has also moved in here and is pushing out its first leaf in the greenhouse. So let's see how that goes. All right, then hanging over here is uh, Syngonium, I think Red Arrow. I need to find the real name, but it is thriving and I think it's such an impactful plant in here because we really get to appreciate the red backsides while it's hanging there. Another Ripsalis over here, they just make it look so jungly, it's pretty. And then over here my Mangela Pothos, so I decided to put it in the greenhouse a couple of weeks ago and this is the first leaf in the greenhouse and it's probably one of the biggest leaves she's grown so far. Previous to that I had her outside which burned her a little bit, but oh well. And on the side over here, I'll show you, so this is where I planted up the top and the bottom next to each other. This was the bottom part and it has reshot in three, four. One, two, I think four, four nodes. I can't even see. Sorry, I can't really get in there. But lots and lots of new shoots on that side over here. And they're already decent sized as well. Look at that. 
Like that's not bad. But I'll do an update on this plant uh, separately. My Plowmania down here, also thriving. Which needs to move out a bit. New sleeve over here, so pretty. Look at that. That is really nice. And over here, my Regal Shields. Over here, my Majestic. So pretty, sorry, I can hardly get to it. Nice backsides as well. And super nice sheen on the leaf, very nice. And my sub penada, oh, growing off the moss pole a bit, isn't it? But she hasn't done much, she only recently started recovering. Alright. I think those are all the plants in the greenhouse for now. So let's repot some of them. Lots and lots of plants in there. I actually want to uh, get rid of a couple as well and uh, Christmas is just around the corner. Probably by the time you see this video Christmas is far gone. But um, I'm going to give a few plants out for Christmas as well. So we're going to look at those today as well. See what I want to give away or a gift to some of my friends. And um, then we're going to repot look at poles do they need extending what do they need i just want to kind of look at every single plant in there and uh, assess what it needs to really get on top of it first of all this is a variegated monstera i'll bring it closer last time i propagated my ones last time i chopped my uh, monstera i chopped into lots of little bits so there's one two three four five six no i think just i counted already i think five cuttings in here Hey my baby, but none of them is really really super highly variegated. This one is kind of the nicest leaf so far, but I'm going to give this to a friend. I think for somebody who's not necessarily a plant person, somebody who doesn't necessarily care about or like doesn't even know about variegation and how historically expensive variegated plants were. Um, I think they would appreciate a plant like this more because it's easier to care for. It's gonna size up quicker. The white parts aren't gonna brown and look ugly and so on. So I think for somebody who is not necessarily, who doesn't necessarily know about the hype of variegated plants, this is a much more rewarding plant to grow because there's like five or six shoots in here and it's just gone that basically means that there's going to be a new leaf unfurling all the time so this is going to be a christmas present for a friend because i think it will be really nice and impactful in their house you know those people that have like five plants and this is going to be their sixth plant like they're going to love that Whereas in my greenhouse, it's just one of hundreds. I have so many variegated monster propagations everywhere. So yeah, I really don't need this plant and I think it will make somebody else really happy. So I'll put this aside. But I reckon I'll just go chronological maybe. Okay, what the hell is this? Okay, too hard basket, I'll just pop it back. <laughs> Problem is this one is neither pretty nor highly variegated, so. Hiding under a shelf, I've got this big begonia that AJ gave me one day and it's definitely being eaten by something. Um, so I'll probably just put that back to feed the wildlife. <laughs> but this is its newest leaf that it unfurled, which is quite nice. Sorry, I have no desire to come closer. Okay, I should. This new leaf is actually really, really pretty and look how big it is. It has a nice sheen to it. Sorry guys if this is going to end up being a really chaotic video again, but this is just how I do plant care. Uh, just cut off the ugly ones so that the new ones can shine. And there are new ones coming. I feel like they might have just gotten a bit too shaded from the other leaves. Alrighty. Oh, hang on. I forgot about this. Holy moly. Fully forgot about it. Oh my god. I grew some moss here. It got burned in my old courtyard and it hasn't really fully recovered by the looks of it. I'll just put the lid back on and forget about it. In a corner over here. Right, let's see how much of this fits in frame. Okay. 
they should fit in frame a little better now. So this one is my Philodendron Ernestii and what happened, she grew outside last year and got absolutely, <laughs> absolutely did not enjoy winter out there. So what I've done, but it was just basically lost all of its leaves, so I just cut the stem in between the nodes. Now, not all of these cuttings actually survived. Quite clearly, these two did not. But this cutting has a new shoot here. This cutting has a new shoot here. And then the base cutting has already given me these two new leaves over here and is working on its third. And the top cutting also has a small one over here. So what I'm thinking I should probably do is take this top and put, pop it in the pot with this one. Uh, that way it's not so super tall. I don't need it to be that tall. The plant is now just re-establishing. It's going to be a while until it reaches the top of its pole again. Um, and I will make it lusher. Okay, so let me take this off its pole. So, you know, it comes to show just because a plant drops its leaves or, I mean, I had to cut some of these off as well because they just ended up looking so ugly. Doesn't mean that all hope is lost. And also it tries that leaves are just, like the beauty of leaves is just temporary. Very often, they'll turn to shit eventually. <laughs> Okay, let me... Root system looks okay. Not mad at this at all. Substrate looks good as well. But I do want to give her some fresh substrate just why not? Um, and then the old substrate I can use in like some bigger pots that I put in the garden, like when I put up like a big palm or something like that. Okay, but I can reuse the same pot. And yes, it's gonna be a tight fit. You guys know me, I love a good tight fit um, when it comes to my pots. That way they don't take up too much space. Let me get some cable ties, one sec please. Hello my baby. All right, I'm back. Also had to just quickly put up, uh, hang out some washing because it's been so rainy over here again. I uh, gotta make use of a good sunny day like today to dry my washing. And I've given the supervisor a chair over here as well so he can properly supervise what I'm doing. So make sure I don't mess up. Right, my baby? No, you don't like this seat? What are you looking at? What's there? All right, got a new top of air road mix here. You know what, actually I will reuse this because otherwise I feel like I'm gonna run out very soon. Ta-da! Done! Here we go. Cut off these. Nah, Bradley did not want to hang out with us today, did he? I need to be organized today, otherwise this is going to turn into a crazy mess over here. Alrighty, these are fine. Okay, let's worry about some allocations. I think there's just too many, too many distractions for Bradley to actually want to hang out with us today. Hang on, you're really far away now. Whenever I look at the view there, um, it looks so much worse than what it actually looks like when I edit later. So right now I look at my little screen on the camera and I'm like, oh my God, this lighting is terrible. And then when I edit it later, I'm like, ooh, this lighting is really nice. Bradley, what are you doing? Are you joining us again after all? Alrighty, this one is uh, Locasia Gagaena. I think and she is super pretty because she has this yellow variegation but when fleece first come out they're basically just green and then the yellow kind of comes in um, over time she's still in the pot that I got her in she's from AJ's and this is a little bit too uh, 
not chunky for my liking. I like my mix really chunky. But obviously it was happy in there, so nothing wrong with that. It just means that you need to water it less. But if I have so many different types of mediums within the greenhouse, it's really hard to just water each plant differently based on its medium, if you know what I mean. So nothing wrong with that. Just this medium requires less frequent watering than the air white mix that all of my other plants are in. So I just want to make it consistent. So let me talk to you a little bit about the greenhouse maybe in itself. Oh, hang on. This one, what is it called again? The Makaritsu, blah, 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 that one, sorry. This one uh, is a more perlite heavy mix. Uh, I just want to very gently tease it. It was from Bunnings in clearance for only 30 bucks, but it has one shoot that is fully white and one shoot that's fully green. Two shoots are full. With two shoots that are fully green. So only one shoot that's actually giving me the nice variegation and half half so on. But so be it. This has a decent root system actually. Very nice. What I might actually do, I might take this reverted one, the full green one, and see if I can separate that. Oh, what is this? Oh, a comb. Already with a new shoot. Another comb with another shoot. Jesus. Yeah, people were upset with me because last time I did look for combs in my mix. Um, I did. It just didn't do it on camera. I know exactly what I'm going to do with those. Okay, I wanted to get this enough. So I just ripped this off. This is the green one. And I'll pop this in the garden actually because I don't need any more green alocasias. I have so many of those. And this one's also kind of very green. So I'll do the same here. I just rip this off. I'll put it in the garden. Maybe the variegation will come back. Maybe not. This one very wide. This one very beautiful. So those are the two I want to keep. All right. These two I'll pot up. I will pot them up together just to make it look nice. And these ones I'll keep on the side and I'll do something with them in a sec. I'm literally sitting in like this one tiny spot that isn't covered by trees. Like I couldn't choose a worse spot. And the umbrella doesn't reach that far. Yeah, that's okay. I'm wearing sunscreen. So yeah, as I mentioned earlier in the intro, I do feel like this came this greenhouse came at the perfect time. I'm not saying I was bored with the plant hobby or anything like that, but it was just not that exciting anymore because I feel like I was reaching not the end of a learning curve, but there's only so much you can learn about moss poles and growing plants indoors in an apartment. And also there was only so much room, right? Plus as my plants were growing bigger and bigger, I was just having less and less room available for new plants. So it was kind of like, I couldn't really get many new plants. Um, things like alocasias, for example, just didn't really like it in my apartment either. So eventually I just gotten like really good at growing the plants that like it in my environment. But that was also just getting very repetitive. Having this YouTube channel definitely helped because the YouTube channel in itself just helped me find this hobby more interesting, not more interesting again, but it brought it to the next level, right? Like it's not just me growing plants for myself in my apartment talking to myself. I'm also growing them for content purposes and growing them and I'm sh experimenting a little bit to, to, to show you guys things that work and that don't work and so on, right? So it made it a little more interesting again because there was a new element added to that. But yeah, having this greenhouse is really nice because it, it just really helped me learn new things about growing plants and grow different plants and learning about misting and overheating and shade covers or not and, and whatnot, you know, and just like a different environment. Plus it's an environment I don't have to be so careful with because it's just a glass box. I can just go wild, right? 
need to get some water one moment actually let me quickly plant these in the ground as well actually no i don't need to get water i'll just park them all on the side and i'll just hoist them all down later duh we're outside all righty let's have a look at this beautiful uh, it looks fine nothing really urgent to do over here so i'll keep that as it is this on thorium the same nothing to do over here it's just going from strength to strength so pretty another one all right you guys look at this this one had the longest petioles over here when i was growing it indoors and don't hate me but i want to cut these leaves off i know they're technically not bad and you know what i'll put them in a vase inside so they look nice but every time i move this plant i'm taking like five plants with me because it's just going wild so i'm actually doing a lot of damage with them every time i touch this plant and we don't want damage okay oh i wanted to show you this these are oh are they gloriosums i think so anyway i just put them in vermiculite and perlite and a little bit of moss and look at all of the new shoots coming out there Anyway, these are the kind of things that just go into the back of the back shelf <laughs> so i don't have to look at them because they're ugly but um you know eventually there won't be okay all of these alocages that grew flowers the flowers need to go this one looks so sad like what is going on with you what do you want just looking happy doesn't need anything okay this one needs something i'll just park everything that needs something out here for now because this is getting a bit challenging uh, she's happy she doesn't need anything she just needs to have her inflows chopped some say that chopping inflows is actually not the right thing to do because the plant grows an inflow for a reason so if you chop it it's just gonna grow a new one but um, I don't care I want to chop them okay Bradley what are you doing? As, uh, oh, these ones urgently need things. But I'll talk to you about these in a sec. Yeah, let's put all of this here. So I've got a bit of room up here. See what's going on. Look at this. This is the sad bottom part of my vercoisum. But it has reshot over here and has a new shoot here. So that does look semi promising. Oh, and this one's actually looking good. Got a bit of, got a little burnt here, I think. I have no desire to make any hybrids or seeds from alocasias. Okay, this is an alocasia I grew from a comb. Um, and the combs came from a variegated alocasia in the first place, or oh, variegated cupria. Now, some people told me it's not variegated, it's virus. Um, so these were just combs and I put them in that IKEA dome. No, it's a Kmart dome. It's just like a little glass egg, basically. Obviously, eventually, once I had leaves, it grew too tall for the top. But I was just perlite with moss in there. And I just put the combs in there, put it in, this, uh, in a nice bright spot. And then they all just sprouted eventually. And that's what I'm going to do with these other combs that I collected earlier. But we'll do that towards the end of the video when I've done everything else I think because that's like a little more finicky okay I don't want to stir up this too much but these other combs I already put in here in preparation for later okay so we've got three plants in here they don't look good honestly but they had no medium no nothing to really grow in I'm surprised they're alive I'm trying to separate them without ruining all of the roots. I don't even know why I'm trying to separate them because I'm going to put them up together. But let me show you if there's some 
see like yeah this variegation is definitely if it's variegation it's not pretty if it's virus then it's still not pretty but the plant has kind of grown out of it over the years which makes me think I don't know what I think and honestly I don't care when I first uh, asked people online uh, is this virus or not or whatever and everybody's like oh my god it's mosaic virus immediately burn it it's going to infect your entire collection it's been in my collection for two and a half years and it hasn't infected anything or anybody so I don't know in general I thought about this yesterday like there are people there like they would sterilize the scissors between every plant so you don't do that and like People are always concerned, it's like, but if you leave your window open, aren't you concerned about animals, uh, bugs or animals transferring? Yesterday I saw some mealybugs on my bird of paradise, I literally just took my hand and just wiped them off and be like, please don't come back. That's it. Whereas other people would like, ster uh, sterilize their entire uh, house. <laughs> I don't know, honestly, I feel like the more careful you are, the less resilient your plants grow. It's like these kids that were never allowed to play in the dirt and then suddenly they go to school and are uh, subject to germs and just are always sick. Plant needs to grow a little resilience as well. Huh? And you gotta expose them to some shit for them to be able to grow resilient. Obviously within limits and do it at your own risk if you wanna be extra careful and prepared and so on. Look, I'm all here for that. I'm just not doing it myself. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Right, these three I want to talk about separately. Okay, this is a Magnificum, but can you see how it kind of grew out of its pot? And that's why I sometimes give them a, a thicker moss layer as well. See all of these roots over here. I'll come closer. See all of these roots over here. You can just build like a layer of moss around it, almost like a a moss pole but it's a pole surrounding the trunk but that's why I like to have moss but it has outgrown the layer of moss a little bit so I want to repot it but you could see I could technically give it a moss pole here as well and these roots will just grow into the pole so anthuriums are climbers just really small climb like really slow climbers with small internodal spacing so let's have a look this I don't remember what went wrong with this plant, but at some stage it, this leaf kind of got a bit damaged. But it's pretty, very pretty plant. I think it was one of the first plants I moved out into the greenhouse. So I, have, I feel like half my anthurium collection is in here, half of it is inside and they're both thriving. Actually, I feel like the ones inside are thriving even more than the ones out here. But yeah, I'm kind of, I fell out of love with anthuriums for a while. I'm falling back in love again. They're so pretty. I just kind of fell out of love when they were just so overhyped, I think, when everybody was just like trying to sell you like a unique hybrid for 500 bucks. And I'm just like, wow, so unique. It's got the same parents as the last three. Decent root system. What I want to do is I want to put it deeper down in the pot so that these roots that we saw earlier are making contact with the substrate. Anyway, I feel like I was stuck at talking about the greenhouse, so you guys know we've, we've done these videos before where you just follow me along on a full day of repotting or plant care and so on. And you guys know my thoughts are very all over the shop. But let's keep talking about the greenhouse. So yeah, I was, it just, I feel like it came at the right moment. It just gave me this challenge that I wanted. Um, and it's like something new. And at the same time, of course, the greenhouse is also a great opportunity for me to diversify my content a little bit. I can only talk about chopping extents and moss poles and how to water them and how to do whatever with them so many times. Eventually it gets just so repetitive. And yes, I still get the same, I still get questions on how do you water moss poles, how do you make a moss pole and so on. Because obviously there's new people joining the hobby all the time and that's awesome I love that there's people joining the hobby and I would love to even think that maybe I played a part in people joining the hobby or maybe I inspired some people to join the hobby but I've done that content already there's plenty of resources out there that show you how I make moss pulse and so on I can only redo that content so many times so eventually I'm just gonna run out of things 
So it's great to have a garden, a greenhouse, so that I can broaden my interest in plants and this hobby, but also broaden my content. Okay, next. I've got three plants and I got them all from Tim from Grow Vertical when I went to his place the other day. The other day, the other week, the other month. Jesus, it's been a few months ago by now. Still haven't gotten on top of that video. I just ignore it. <laughs> this one, is it Cordatum? Cord I don't, anyway, all I know is that it has a bit of vercosum in it and that's why these new leaves are so incredibly sexy. Two ways, I could grow this up a moss pole or I could grow this as like a more bushy plant. Okay, you convinced me, moss pole. <laughs> Let's have a look inside first. Substrate still looks great. Alrighty, what I might just do is I might just give it a fresh pot because this one has so much algae build up. I can't really see the roots in the first place. And fitting to that, I will of course give it a grow vertical because I mean that's where it came from. From the grow vertical man himself. I am running very low on moss, so I'll probably not put moss in this. I'll probably put aeroid mix in this moss pile because I need to buy more moss. And again, I don't want to go to Bunnings in the greenhouse. That's okay though because it just doesn't, it's just not that messy in the greenhouse. Right? Oh, it doesn't get that messy when I have uh, aeroid mix in the pile because I can just water it with a hose and the mess can just drop on the floor. All right, I'll position this on the moss pole like this. The leaves will eventually just come around and face the light. Huh? It's a good mix that Tim put together here. Okay, I just have a piece of wire over here, like a really skinny, cute little wire. What I'll do is I'll just use this to kind of pin it to the moss pile for now. But this one is not thick enough to make the little U-shaped pins that I normally use. So I'll just swing it around the back just to guide it towards the moss pile because it's just not used to growing on one for now. But eventually once the first few roots have attached, I can get rid of this. Beautiful. Now let's fill the pole with aeroid mix and I'm running out of that as well. Actually I made a specific mix for the pole. Now I don't need to fill this all the way because this is going to be a very very slow climber. I'm also just going to make a little loopy thing on here so I can easily uh, hook it into the greenhouse grid later. Like that on the side. Next one, also from Tim. This one is like a like a more strappy one. Can also climb, and I saw it at his place. I don't. I forgot the name. I'll have to check with Tim. Oh wow! Look at this one huge root. Okay, not bad. What's going on here? Mix looks good, very tree fern fiber heavy, so I'll pop that back, but again, I'll give it a new pot, I think. What I might do is actually, I'll just mix it with a little bit of my mix to make it less water retentive. But this one will look cool. Now, I'm wondering if I should already give it a moss pole. Why not? Might as well, huh? The whole idea, to encourage it. Stick to my own advice, put it on a moss pole when it's still small. Let's do that. But again, running out of moss, so it's going to be a aeroid mix pole. Alrighty, so we were stuck at, yes, I love growing in the greenhouse. It's so cool and I love the new challenge and I mean, I set it up in winter and the beginning I did not enjoy it honestly because the conditions were just not that great and I wasn't really prepared to supplement the conditions and so on. With spring and summer, obviously 
it's been really nice growing with the greenhouse so let's see what next winter has in store for me really what I learned with the greenhouse I mean a lot of people would think oh easy you just have a greenhouse you build it you pop plants in there and then everything will be fine everything is easy the plants will grow by themselves because well now you have a greenhouse yes and no definitely the plants in the greenhouse are growing crazy but to be honest the plants inside are also growing crazy at the moment this one is Jerry Horn and I should have really gotten on top of this a bit earlier so what I might actually do hang on hang on the doorbell rang yay an external hard drive so I can film more <laughs> um, where was I yeah should have really propagated this plant right so I'll wind I'll water it but I won't um, pot it up yet because I'm just gonna propagate this holy shit what is this and then I make a lush pole out of it so I let these cuts dry out this is my holding area I think this one right here and then this one I just need to water okay sweet we're making progress and this has become the good mix right my carnivorous plant it's so bloody pretty so what I really want to do with this is I want to get it I don't know what I want to do with this I don't know how I'm gonna deal with this but something needs to change it's taking up too much space uh, yes that's it that's it i think this needs to go a bit higher now yes. beautiful okay let's sorry i get so distracted let's just focus on one thing at a time now look here so this grew from seed and i don't know what to do with them Actually, you know what? I'll leave it as it is for now. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Let's focus on some moss piles. I want to show you this one, but I'm not going to do anything with it because it's kind of part of my experiment. So, look at these leaves at the top here. I should really extend its pile though, right? Should I do this? Totally, right? Okay. Moss, 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 moss. So this dubia has grown on a moss pole for oh, a long time now. Like, definitely, like, I don't know, I'm losing track because of all the moving. Um, Two years maybe maybe a year and a half maybe less actually actually probably less to be honest i did chop it i think in between as well but it was a little experiment to see if i can grow a plant without a pot and i mean it is thriving without a pot it doesn't want a pot where was i stuck Yes, you'd think like, oh, you know, easy. You just build a greenhouse, you pop the plants in there and everything is fine. Yes and no. Definitely the plants are thriving, but as I said, the plants indoors are thriving as well. And of course, I'm very lucky with Sydney's amazing, amazing climate. Makes things a little bit easier for me. But what I've learned about the greenhouse is that it's not so much about the plant care, like the watering and 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 so on right because I mean a lot of the watering is not done by the misting system or I just walk in and I just hoist everything down I don't really check which plant needs watering or not they all just get watered right you don't have an option basically um, but instead it is much more about managing conditions and I've got a full video on conditions versus care huh? where I kind of break down this whole concept where sometimes that's not super clear to people specifically if they're new to growing plants 
conditions are basically like temperature, humidity, light, airflow. So those are the things that set the potential for the plant to grow in the first place. If the plant isn't growing in the conditions that it likes, then there's just no chance for that plant to thrive. Um, care is then what you do, like how often you water your plant. So let me see how this works out. How often you water your plant, the fertilizer, the repotting, the pot size that you choose and so on, right? So these are all things that we often hear about. It's like don't repot in winter, that's care, that's not conditions, right? Um, stop fertilizing during the colder season, that's care, that's not conditions and in my opinion this is very wrong advice by the way but I break that down more in that uh, detailed video but basically I don't have to worry too much about care because it's really easy to care for the plants in there the only one uh, like I can just water everything with a hose um, to fertilize I just have this big 10 uh, this big 15 liter um, spray sprayer where I just oh my god this is getting so finicky hang on this big 15 liter sprayer where I just walk around have fertilizer in it and um, and spray everything sorry guys I'm just uh, overlapping these two grow verticals by two holes over here so that I can cable tie them together um, so caring is really easy because I do everything in bulk that will do the same that will get the same bordering I don't need to be like clean with it because it's not like I'm doing this inside and I need to look out for the floor and the ceiling and whatnot I can just go wild right the care part inside my greenhouse is so easy but what's hard about the greenhouse are the conditions or setting the right conditions the greenhouse gives you the ability to have amazing conditions but you still need to make it work right? so it's a glass box essentially I mean it's, mine is not fully glass it's per, per specs on the side but the front is fully glass um, but it is expo especially in Australia it is exposed to a lot of Sun huh? so I've seen the temperature in there go up to 40 which is too hot for these plants actually um, which when it's really hot and sunny it means the humidity drops right so um, then if the humidity is to get the humidity higher I have misting misting also cools down the greenhouse so that kind of addresses that but then at the same time that means that uh, now there's so much water sitting on all the leaves which could increase fungal problems so you need to stay on top of airflow so basically the greenhouse it's not about the plant care aspect the greenhouse is all about getting your conditions right and that takes a little while and that changes like last week we had 36 degrees one day and then the next day 22 so how am I and I mean I still looking for like a system that is smart enough to automate all of this but one day I need to have the misters running like non-stop and the next day I don't need the misters at all and so on so that part that is the part that I've been learning about and that is an ongoing learning issue because well the weather keeps changing the conditions keep changing just because it's sunny right now doesn't mean it's sunny next week so next week I might need to do something different so it's more about understanding how you can control your conditions and I think I've been pretty successful so far I've got this fan over here that's water and dust proof so that's on all the time I've got the solar panel set up that charges the generator the generator then fuels the fan I've got the misting system set up from Sproutwell by the way the whole greenhouse is from Sproutwell it's the 1980s greenhouse so it's uh, like two meters deep and three meters wide I think uh, I'll have everything linked in the description and I've got a detailed video on when I set it up and so on as well actually I make a moss um, I make a playlist out of all of the greenhouse videos and I'll, I'll link it all right let's have a look at this sweet perfect I can hang that back in there look how pretty this is but it doesn't need anything it's happy another one the tenue also happy does it need a repot 
don't think so. <laughs> Look, my Billy decided to not give it a moss pole the second time around. It's happy. I think this should go here. Oh, you must splendid. Just needs a little bit of a top up on its moss. Looks a bit sad at the bottom, huh? But it's okay. Alrighty, this one needs a repot. Emerald green, let me bring it forward. Actually, I don't know if it's emerald green or global green. I think emerald green is green with dark green and global green. No. Nah. Emerald is light green with dark green and global is dark green with light green. To me, that is the same. I don't know if you can see this nicely, but it's a very pretty plant. Very, very pretty. So I just need to give it a repot. So yeah, and that challenge of, um, you know, consistently keeping the conditions right in the greenhouse, that will be ongoing, right? But that is what's been exciting me recently. And of course, yeah, if I would be, well, let's just say Germany, because I did live a long time of my life in Germany. I never grew plants in Germany, by the way. Like, I only started the plant hobby here in Australia. But if I would be living in Germany, for example, yeah, I would have a much... I would be facing different challenges with the greenhouse. I probably wouldn't be facing too many overheating challenges. I mean, you know, maybe in, in winter, in summer, it can get really hot. But I would be facing more challenges around heating. Well, which is okay. It's just all about understanding your conditions and then supplementing them to make it work for the plants that you are growing. So if in winter I just need to find like a heating solution, for example, for my plants. Huh? Whereas in summer and majority of the year over here, it is nice and hot. I need to find a solution to cool down my plants, which is the misting system in my instance. Get a load of this. Ah, so pretty, Martin Sony eye. Indonesian marble. All right, this one's really pissing me off. Look at the internodal spacing this has grown with. This is ridiculous. Plus it's just fully reverted to green. So what I'll do is I will we'll chop between the nodes. Is this a node? Yeah, I'll chop between the node here, here, oh bye. Uh, here. Yeah, I'll keep this. So that way, hopefully it will reshoot in a few spots. What is going on with this wire? Huh? And uh, hopefully it will grow a little lusher. So this part, I'll just... Only has one root, so obviously it kind of spins around a little bit on that one root. So to stop it from breaking, I'll just pin it to the pole, again using wire. All right, let's see if this does the trick. That's what I've done with the um, Amedium Medium before. And I reckon it wants a little more light. So I'm gonna move it somewhere different. Alrighty guys, this one is me experimenting with the new Grow Vertical Pole. And so far, so good. I'll do a separate video on that as well. But the pole is a little empty. So I will fill it with a little more aeroid mix. Philodendron Magic Dragon. It's a hybrid that Tim from Grow Vertical made. Um, let me just see what's in there. It has definitely rooted into its pole, but still at very early stages on its moss pole journey, which is okay. It lost a lot of leaves last year over winter. It overwintered in the greenhouse. I can smell some root rot. But that's okay. I'll just give it a new little bit of new substrate. 
So yeah, the whole conditions versus care thing still applies when growing in the greenhouse. It's just the care is really easy and the conditions part is really hard. Whereas I feel like indoors, the conditions part, I don't do anything to supplement my conditions. I use grow lights, that's the only thing I do inside to supplement my conditions. Um, but I don't have humidifiers. Yes, I have heaters in winter, but they're for myself, not necessarily just for the plants and so on. So I feel like inside it's more about care and making sure that the care approach that I'm taking is not uh, also ruining my whole apartment uh, in the process. Whereas uh, growing in the greenhouse, I feel like it's all about in staying on top of the conditions, uh, making sure that the conditions stay reasonable for these plants. Because honestly, all it takes is like one really hot, bloody day and they're all melting in there and <laughs> that's it, bye. So everything inside is just a little bit like on a really hot day when it's 40 degrees outside the inside doesn't heat up to 40 degrees on a really cold day the uh, inside doesn't cool down that quickly right everything is kind of just a little bit more balanced whereas in the greenhouse the greenhouse doesn't save that much heat when it cools down it's as cold inside as it's outside actually in winter at times it was cooler inside of the greenhouse because of the humidity uh, on top of the cold. Huh? So conditions, 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 which which will be quite interesting when it comes to winter time. But we'll tackle that uh, then. Right? Okay. Next, this burnery and I have not had a good time together, but that's okay. I think we're slowly uh, getting used to each other. Top her up with a little bit more mix in her pole. Brentianum. Never had success with this plant. Let's have a look. Some new roots. Okay, I don't want to disturb it too much, but not, not the greatest of all root systems, which well, was kind of to be expected if it would have the best root system of all time. I sure as hell hope it gives me better growth than this. But yeah, this kind of went really, really dead in winter. It survived all winter out there, but it went kind of very sad looking. But now it's coming back. So I've got a feeling it's probably just gonna thrive. It's gonna start thriving just before the next winter hits us, knowing my luck. That's okay, maybe the second winter around, it has grown a little more resilient to those conditions. We'll find out. And as you can see, I don't secure the pole to the pot or anything like that. It just works. Alrighty, let's have a look at my majestic. Oh, noise. Oh wow, look at these roots that it's growing out there. Okay, so it's rooting really well. It is somewhat finding its way onto the moss pile. Maybe a little bit of wire to encourage it. I have absolutely f***ed this wire so badly. <laughs> what have I done? Just a little wire action to encourage it. A little further to go. Hey, you're supposed to go this way. Now that it has a noise leaf, I really want to chop this ugly one off. And you know what, this one is kind of really ugly too. Sorry, they just spread too far, takes up too much space, shades everything else. So you, my darling, are our one and only leaf. We put all of our hope in you. Wow, oh, look at that. I reckon she needs a bigger pot, but I reckon I don't have enough mix for that. But look at how thick her trunk has gotten. It's uh, regal shields, by the way, guys. But she's not really giving me these regal shield leaves, which honestly, I don't really have room for this anyway. Do you need a... She needs a repot. Damn it. See how much error mix I've got left over at the end of this, but I don't want this to be the one and only plant I can still repot. Oh, that's it already. 
Okay, let me just quickly clean up a little bit because I'm getting really nervous energy from all of that mess around me. Okay, I'm back with <laughs> another coffee. Um, okay, I'm almost done. The sun is <sighs> struggling to have you guys get the umbrella, you guys get the fan so you don't overheat. Meanwhile, I'm here in the sun. Yeah, we'll find out. Again, last time I thought the I thought the footage was shocking, but it turned out okay. All right, so in here we've got my can we see this? My Berlin Marx Fantasy has grown up so nicely on its pole and is continued increasing in leaf size. So absolutely nothing to complain about here. Got a spare pole, I'll fill that with moss. It has been so much fun and I think this greenhouse has been just so beautiful as well. It's honestly the first thing everybody <laughs> comments on when they come to my house and visit me. Uh, everybody's like, oh my god, your greenhouse is amazing. I'm like, I know, thank you. So have to, and again, that greenhouse, that greenhouse was sponsored uh, by Sproutwell uh, back then. So a massive thank you to Sproutwell for sponsoring this greenhouse for me. It has made such a huge impact in my in my in my growth journey, and uh, such a huge impact in this hobby for me. Like it really, it really really saved this hobby for me, to be honest. Okay, with this one. <laughs> I'm not going to fill it all the way, the plant has still plenty of room to go. So same principle here as I did before, I will overlap it by two cable ties. Okay, I don't want to use all of my moss in case there's something unexpected happening and I need some moss urgently. I will open up the top two cable ties over here. And this, I have the feeling this has zero roots in the pot. So we're going to look at the pot. And if there's no roots in the pot, I'll actually keep it potless. Okay, and then I'll overlap this. Sorry, let me just do, you can't really see, but come on, you don't need to see me put a cable tie in. A couple of weeks ago, I also did a garden makeover and everything is really thriving. But again, we've had really good weather. But at the same time a lot of rain which is good for the plants so I, I hate the rain but perfect for the plants we had forecasted like a really dry hot summer and i was getting really worried i mean summer technically only started yesterday was the longest day here in australia um technically we're only just getting started but here we go by the way done so this can continue growing up this pole. Let's have a look. But yeah, it hasn't been as hot and disgusting as promised. Yeah, look, hardly any roots inside of that pot. Huh? Look at that, that's almost embarrassing. I wanna chop this. It's a little propagation, I'll pot up. And now I have another uh, potless pole over here. I like the look of that. So there we go. Gives the greenhouse a little bit of height, I think. It's nice. Okay. I'll show you closer in a sec. Oh well it will be more than a sec. My god I'm making so much room in this green. Oh hang on there's a lot of plants there. <laughs> Ah, oh, this one. That's what I actually came here for. <laughs> I remember. Okay, let's... This one is... Monstera Laniata Varigata. Let me get another pole. Yeah. Very loud bird. Now, I picked up... It's getting really sunny here. I need to do something about this. Okay, I moved you a bit closer so that we can all have the umbrella. I think it's still not really... Anyway, sorry. I need to focus on my plan. Okay, so this is a Laniata. I picked it up from AJ's and it is going very, very white. 
and I purposely picked that one up because I want to see if it is sustainable to actually grow something like that. There are two shoots in here and see these roots, oh, they're dying for a pole. Now, actually, I've had another fully white plant in my greenhouse, my Florida Beauty. Oh my God, that mix is so fine. My Florida Beauty and she hided it in there because the fully white leaves were just getting wet from the misting and they just turned into mush within a day, really. So, see how we go. The mandula's in there as well. She hasn't had the same issue, so maybe it's just something that the Florida ghost had. Um, I moved moved the ghost out of the greenhouse and it's recovering now but yeah the fully white leaves did not enjoy getting so wet where's the hold of them I'm so unorganized imagine we do a drinking game and you need to take a shot every time I get off this chair wow you would not make it to the end of the video let me tell you that lucky I saved some moss almost like I anticipated I'm not fully done yet, yeah, that's good enough. And I don't have that much moss, I just need to fill it half and then when I buy more moss I can fill the rest of the pole. Okay, everybody take a shot. Okay, ah, la, 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 la. I don't like to fill these poles in hindsight because it's very easy to just make the moss too dense in there. So I just sometimes use a chopstick to kind of loosen the moss up a little bit. That way you need less moss for moss pole, but uh, also like roots like oxygen. If you have the moss too compressed, there's just not enough oxygen. But then if you don't have enough moss, there's not enough stuff to actually retain moisture. Then it's going to dry out really quickly, specifically in a greenhouse that can get so hot, things dry out quickly, right? So you do want moss in here, but if you just lightly flake it in there, there's too much aeration. The air is what's dry, the air is what's going to make it dry out. Um, but again, not such a big issue in the greenhouse because of the misting system, everything is kind of consistently kept moist. Because of the heat, everything uses a lot of water, so I don't also don't worry too much about overwatering. More of a concern if you grow indoors, because indoors you have less airflow, less light, less heat, meaning your plant is going to use less water. If your plant, if your medium like never dries out, even though you have a decent sized plant on it, it's most likely that your plant is just not getting enough light. If your plant is getting enough light, it should dry out. Okay, let me pin these on there. I don't know if this wire is strong enough. I might just use a cable tie. Um, what else can I tell you about the greenhouse? Yeah, that black shelf that I got inside the greenhouse, it's also from Sproutwell. That's why it matches the greenhouse so nicely. And honestly, I'm so positively surprised by how easy it was to move this plant, um, move the whole greenhouse over. I honestly anticipated that to be the biggest nightmare ever. And it just turned out to be really easy. I think definitely credit to Tim and I and the, our approach like not wanting to take it fully down I mean I think that is the, re the, the obvious thing to do but um, I still think we managed the way that we approached it I think was very smart and made it less of a headache than I initially anticipated it so good on us I don't know if that's the official way. Well, actually, I know that it's definitely not the official way because obviously the way that we're taking it down and so on, we're running risk of breaking things, deforming some parts. So yeah, it's not necessarily something I'd recommend other people do. So definitely don't take my moving vlog as a tutorial. I just didn't have the time. Right? If I had more time, yeah, I'd take it down and have less risk of things going wrong. But I took the risk and luckily nothing went wrong. So. That was good but things could have easily gone really wrong like the roof could have just snapped in half <laughs> or something like that i'm so you know no risk no fun no risk no reward in that instance my risk was definitely rewarded which was really nice <laughs> yay all righty pop that on the pole just need some water as well now let's see i should be pretty much at the end of my adventures over here actually we are not 
done, I found a couple of propagations in my kitchen. I want to pop these up as well. Right, that's the black velvet and silver cloud. The Jerry Horn cuttings will go in a jar of water and I popped them in my kitchen. I have all my propagations in my kitchen. Come on, go in there. Are you going to fit in there? The roots, 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 roots. Are you going to fit in there? Yes. And here's a, come on, go in there. Done. All right, I'll pop that in the kitchen and I'll give it with this. So, I'm mixing some pumice in my airwork mix. So I've noticed that my alocasias really like pumice. Alrighty, so we're gonna to get to her after all. Good. Well, that came out easy. I'm going to tease them a little bit. Wow, it's very root bound. Okay, that explains why it's just not really increasing in leaf size anymore. Very gently. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm looking for combs. <laughs> Some of these combs are. Huge, look at this, I've never seen corms that big. Wow, oh, there's so many corms in there. Okay, I don't want any more corms, I need to stop this. I don't want corms, I want the corms to stay on there and kind of do themselves, um, like propagate themselves. But these ones I will keep, keep them separate from the others so I can different, actually it's so easy to differentiate, these are huge. Beauty. That was it for the repotting. There are two more plants in there that I want to bring out and show you in a little bit more detail, but let me just clean up everything so I can relax. Cut. The, ow! Alright, the two other plants I wanted to show you are this Plaumanii over here. So pretty with the new leaves. Might just cut off this old ugly one. Bye. And because I couldn't show you that well earlier when everything else is there is my mandula. And now you can see these on the side. Shoot number one, shoot number two, shoot number three, and shoot number four. Look at that. This is just so stunning. Love, love, love this plant and I love that that's kind of the first thing you see when you walk in here. Really, really beautiful. Alrighty, it's getting really sunny here. It's supposed to be overcast today anyway. So, I mentioned before that the care part in the greenhouse is easy, right? Because I can just hoist everything down. But as a result of that, I've really been neglecting the... Oh, I've really been neglecting fertilizing everything, right? Inside, I've just gotten in the habit of... I fill up my bottles of water, I put GT foliage focus in it, and I just use a weak dilution with every watering. Every now and then I just flush it, everything out with water, right? But majority of the times I do my GT foliage focus and it's just become a habit, right? Every time I fill up my bottles, I put GT in it, easy. Now, because over here, the misting and the housing is doing all of the watering, I kind of 
and not providing them with nutrients. But um, the aeroid mix as well as the moss pile really relies on nutrients being provided via watering. So that is probably the one thing about the K in the greenhouse that I haven't really been on top of. But I've got this big 15 liter sprayer over here and I can mix fertilizer in there and then just walk around and spray everything. Now I'm not going to do that for the ones that I just potted up. I will do eventually, but today I also I just want to water them thoroughly, get all of the finer particles from the aeroid mix to um, to get flushed out and so on. So I'll just water them using the normal hose because it would just take too long. Otherwise, I feel like. And then after hose, then I'll give them a little spray with the fertilizer as well. All right, so I'm actually going to use uh, GTCCS. So it's what do you call it? And I'll just wing it. Uh, more the merrier, right? Might as well finish it. It's called here yeah, Clonex Clone Solution. And it's great. It has a lot of here's what's in it. But basically, I use the Clonex solution usually like if I do a water propagation, for example, I would dilute some of that in water. If um, my plants go through shock because of moving house or because um, of repotting and so on. Clonex. Um, that seems to be really working really well. And I think that's the way that it's intended to be used as well. So I'm gonna put all of these back and then I'm gonna go around and fertilize everything. Let's go! Don't want you to get wet. That's good. I only used about half the tank, so I'm going to do this with the next watering again and I'll try and do this like once a month now. Alrighty, let's get on to those combs. Let me show you what I've done first. There are two combs in here, they already have a shoot each. They already have roots, so I just potted them up. Okay. The rest of the combs doesn't have any roots just yet. So... What I'll do with them, I'll pop them on some moss over here. But what I have noticed helps these sprout is if you take a knife and you just peel the skin. See how they've got like a little skin around them? If you very gently like peel them like an onion. That seems to sprout, help them sprout a bit, but be gentle. And if you feel like you're doing more damage than good, then stop. Not all alocasia seem to have it in the same way. These ones seem to not really have that much of a skin. So I'll just pop them in moss. Don't worry, I'll show you close up in a sec. And I just put this in a takeaway container with uh, moss in it. You could use vermiculite or whatnot. Um, yeah, and I'll just pop the other ones in there as well, the regal shields into the same one. These ones definitely have more of a skin. Hang on, this one. These ones have more of a skin. See, these are the regal shields one. You can just peel this kind of skin. 
maybe do it with your fingers, not a knife, to prevent it from being damaged. My fingers are so filthy, sorry. But this seems to be helping them root. And once they're rooted, there will be shoots. I, do, I might just do that to a few, and a few I won't, and then we'll see which ones sprout and which ones do not. Alrighty, and the other three I might just pop in there without peeling them, see if it makes any difference. And yes, this was the biggest container I could find. At the beginning, I will put the lid back on, and it wants a really bright spot, so I'll pop this right here. Awesome, let me clean up, and then we can finish the video. Alrighty, quick pan through the greenhouse. I mean, it's not looking all too different to before. Just the plants themselves are a little happier. Or hopefully a little happier soon. Alright, awesome. I was dying to get on top of all of this. Uh, it's been on my to-do list for quite some time, but given the move, I've just had different priorities. Now, the afternoon sun is fast approaching, so it's time for me to get out of here so I can close the doors, turn on the misters, turn on the fan, and create these great conditions uh, that I spoke about earlier today. Talking about the conditions, I'll also put a little snippet on the side of my uh, humidity and temperature reader so you get a bit of an understanding of what the average, the tops, the lows are and so on. Um, oh, well, the misters are on. I think that's my sign to get out of here before everything gets wet. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe and leave a nice comment and I'll see you next time. Bye!